got to establish something. Before we go into reformation, before we talk about repentance, before we talk about paradigms, regeneration, those are terms that are not discussed on a high level that are necessary terms, concepts, that's going to help us, I, and I keep hearing evolve, metamorphosis, to change, to transition from one form to another. That's what God wants. We're not supposed to be stagnant. That's not God's goal. We're not supposed to be bound by a, a, a sofa <laughs> or a love seat. It's just a love seat in name. You ain't supposed to love the seat. <laughs> Amen. You're supposed to be able to get off your blessed assurance and go discover the things of the Spirit. Especially when you get teaching like this. You say, man, I'm going to take this home. I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to hover and brood upon this information and incubate it so I can, you know, have this seed that's sown. I mean, you know, I mean the, the gospel, the, the word is the seed sown. It's got to be sown in good, in good ground. It's got to be put in the right atmosphere, right? Now look at this. This is the dialogue Jesus had with some religious leaders. With a bastard system that still, they couldn't recognize who he was. It was ordained of God that they wouldn't be able to perceive him, of course. He's still coming among his own, and his own is still not able to perceive it. We're caught up in carnal ordinances. Amen? Amen? Okay. It says, and he answered and said unto them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honored me with their lips, but their heart is what? Nearby? All right. Yeah. So they got the right information. They can say the right things. Your lips honor me. Your vocabulary is right. You can repeat stuff. Right? You've been a good, uh, 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 what do you call that? Not transcriber, scribe, right. Exactly. You've been a good, great scribe. You've recorded a lot of legal terms. <laughs> but, Somehow there's been a divide. It hasn't connected to your heart. It has to connect where? To the heart. Tell your neighbor it has to connect with the heart. It does. It has to. It, matter of fact, your life depends on it. Tell your neighbor your life depends on the connection of your head and your heart. It has to. You have to get it in your spirit to understand that's what the Spirit of God wants to do in you. Because you can see these individuals could not yeah I know these individuals could not apprehend what is necessary for them to, to move forward in the things of God. And I'm here to tell you we're still at that same junction. We had to get to the point where where we understand that true repentance mm -hmm. is the recapturing of one's heart and a repositioning of one's mind. And orthodoxy, true orthodoxy, and the rabbinical writers is not only to educate your mind, to inform you. Because the informed mind doesn't mean it's a renewed one. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But it, the whole point, the, the, the crux of the matter is that, that the Spirit of God has to grab your heart. If he gets your heart, your head won't follow. Yeah. But too many of us try to reason through scriptures in our head. And it cannot be and it never penetrates our heart. <clears throat> because ultimately, that's what a divide is. Right? Am I right? Yeah. Ephesians 4.18. Let's see. Ephesians 4.18. We'll see. We'll look and see where that divide is. But ultimately, that's that's what a divide is. Is where? In our hearts. Tell your neighbors in your heart. In your heart. Okay. Ephesians 4. And 18. 4 and 17. This I say therefore to testify the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Right? So we are not supposed to be bound by or defined by 
Because the word Gentiles is a, in, in, in Greek it means an ethnos. Am I, it's an ethnos. Okay. We, we get ethnic. Different class of people. There's only one race, it's just different versions. Different expressions, right? It's the human race in all its varied form. Puerto Rican, European, whatever. Right? Just one. So we're not supposed to walk a certain way. So our lifestyle, walk is always synonymous with a lifestyle. So our lifestyle should not be in the vanity of our mind. Next verse. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. Because of the blindness of the heart. Kingdom message comes to deal with the heart. And it says there's that the understanding is darkened. And if your understanding is darkened in an area, it makes you seem to be alienated for the life of God. The alienation is not God. Where does the alienation come from? The darkness of our understanding. And when our understanding is darkened, then our heart is no longer insightful. It loses sensitivity. Am I right? So it, what happens is now <clears throat> there is no life form because of the ignorance. So if I remain in that state of mind, I'm going to ignore this kingdom message that God has given us. You think you're ignoring me. <laughs> you're really ignoring me. You're ignoring him. And it becomes a, a detriment to your family because you've allowed ignorance to reside. And as ignorance resides, and what the fruit of being having our understanding darkened is ignorance. And ignorance itself puts a breach between us and God. It brings a sense or form of alienation. Right? Y'all okay? Y'all yeah. ain't like y'all on life support. <laughs> it's like, I can come over there and you fall over. But it's true. This is the thing. <clears throat> this thing is internal. This is internal stuff. We have to get recalibrated. I know y'all hear me saying that a lot, but we have to. Tell your neighbor we have to. Yeah, we, have to. we ain't got a choice in this matter. If you're going to be able to bless humanity, you're going to be able to leave an inheritance to your family, you have to be able to experience the things of God the way He intended, the way He intended it, without any amendments on your part. Kingdom message is not to be amended. It's to be interpreted. And not, we can't interpret it according to our culture. We can't interpret it according to our upbringing. That's why it's important for us to go through reformation, go through repentance, and go through, you know, being regenerated so that we can make sure that there is no mixed sin. No. Go back over to Mark 7 and 7. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> how, be, how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? Here you have it, folks. Everything I said, the yoga religion hinges upon indoctrination. Indoctrination has, so, has stigmatized the mind of God's people. It has desecrated the Lord's inheritance. You were brought out to be brought to Him. In the meantime, you were brought here. Because I'm a gatekeeper, I'm a porter, to present you to him. You're not, you're not supposed to know more about me than you know about him. That's why I get a little leery when people can tell you things or share things from out from here and it's verbatim Word for word, what I said. Hey, I don't mind 
tagline, you know, you can put a clickbait a tagline, ain't no problem with that. A little press don't hurt nobody. But we need to know what is he saying to you? We need to know how you are processing it. What button has he pushed in your life to cause something to resonate in your spirit? That now you know for a fact you have something nobody can take from you. But it complements us. So if no scripture is given for private interpretation. Remember 2 Peter 1 and 21? No scripture is private interpretation. If you get anything privately, and I know that's probably some of the struggle. That's why we don't share. Because we don't want nobody to validate or invalidate our experiences. But that's why we have other people around us. Make sure you have wise counsel around you because in a multitude of counsel there is safety so you get other people of like precious faith. Either, either, either they're a, a, a Paul or a Silas or a Timothy. I got people in my life who I can go up, who I can talk to, that I can reach and bring up. Can't be the only top dog. <laughs> That's what we got in the church. Everybody won't be top dog. Yeah. We get that song come out. Who let the dog? Be? Mm -hmm. A teacher for doctrine, the commandments of man. Next verse. <laughs> for laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as, you, as the washing of pots and cups and many such other things you do because you got to go in the first five verses. They had a problem with him not washing his hands. Like most of us do. We have a problem because somebody don't do it the way we've been taught. Oh, boy. Oh, religious spirit. Because nobody do it like the way we know to do. And, and, and you know, as a, as a sibling and part of this ministry, yeah, you're supposed to bring cor correction to your brother and sister. If you know you're walking in a certain way and you're walking circumspectly, yeah, you can pull them aside, pull them by the coattails and say, hey, you know what, we don't do that, but it ain't us. That's why it's good to have public prophetic words. So you can tell them, say, hey man, remember last, uh, last year the Paul prophesied something that you do? You going in that direction? That's what we used to do. I had, y'all saw them, I had hardcore dudes. I had some dudes that was hardcore. They'll pull me up and say, man, brother Steve, where you been? I said, what you doing? What you mean, man? I said, dude, man, we, we got to be on the wall. We can't be taking time. Are we on the wall, dog? We on the wall. When I was in between my, you know, my ex-wife before my next wife showed up, which was actually by Isaac instead of me being bound by Ishmael. Oh, Lord. But, in, you know, in the meantime, I was just caught up. But thank God for brothers. They would, when they see me, they would love on me and they would correct me. I, did, I, know, I know that was in the 90s. Yeah. And the 21st century church, we really ain't feeling that. You know? <laughs> oh, no, Negro, you can't come up in here and try to help me that. So why you ain't doing that? <laughs> yep, that's all because you knowledgeable as get up. But you ain't got no get up. You heavy in the flesh. They call that an Eli water. Eli was heavy in the flesh. Am I right? Yeah. Even so much for uh, he when Ichabod was coming and hot nap and was getting ransacked, he 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 didn't even know. He didn't even know the new administration. He didn't even know Samuel. The guy that fought speaking to Samuel. Because he was heavy in flesh. Let me move on. Verse 9. And he said unto them, You full well reject the commandment of God that you may keep status quo. And you can make sure you don't step out of the box. Huh? So that you can continue to look like them. You're afraid to step out on water. Some of us are so afraid of our family. Full well reject the commandment of God. Full well know the culture in the house. But, that's Johnny. That's it. That's okay. I'm going to let on him anyway. No, 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 no. This go across all lines. Husband, wife, nieces and nephews, cousins, mamas. 
I'm not my exempt. She'll tell you. You bug is fine. I'm of another order. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love my mama dear. I'm only gonna tell her something that's gonna help her long term. I'm not gonna accommodate an illicit behavior that full well rejects the, the ordinance of God. I cannot, I will not, I won't. But nobody. Bless my daddy's soul. He said, you set me down. Yeah. Yeah, I set you down. And that scowl and wrinkle on the front of, your, in front of your forehead is messing folks up. I need a smile. A hug coming from up the door. You can't do that. Sit down. 